Hi, I'm Debbie Ellickson, and I'm here to help you do your own PR. First, we will start with defining yourself. What that means is what do you do? What do you want people to come to you for? How do you want to be hired? What is it exactly that you want to do? And don't just say, I want to run a business. I want to write a book. Dive a little deeper into specifics. How will you do it? Are you going to write a book? Are you going to do presentations? Will you run a business? Will you have a storefront? Will you do it on, on digital? How will you do it? What types of products will you be putting out? Why will you do it? It isn't just about making money. What is the reason by why you want to do what you do? It is not just for the sake of doing it. Why are you doing what you do in the sense that you want to do this for the rest of your life? You got to love it. So why do you love it? Why you? What is it about you that people should come to you for, for this service or product? So look at your backstory. What is your backstory? What is your uniqueness? So look at innovation, things that you have done that stand out from everybody else. What is your vision? And then you need receipts. Prove some of the things that you've done. Have you had articles written about you? Have you had a case study that showcases exactly what you do? So find the receipts. They don't have to be change the world type of receipt, but anything that will give you credibility in what you are doing. Then the hardest part about this is to come up with an impact statement. That impact statement describes what you do, who you are, why you want to do it, and who your target audience is. It is not easy to do. It will not be, you will not just sit down and write it off in five minutes. It's going to take some time and you will keep evolving and changing that impact statement, but you have to start somewhere. So use all those areas that I just mentioned to help you write that impact statement. Then after that, you need to look at who your people are. Who are the people that you want to work with? Who is your target audience? Who is your customer? Are they business people? Are they CEOs? Are they athletes? Are they moms with kids? You can't say just everybody because not everybody is going to watch your product. So figure out exactly who your target customer is. Then figure out where they live. Sure, you want to know what demographic they are. They could be global. The world is global now. But where do they live in the sense that are they going to theaters? Are they going to stores? Are they shopping in stores? Are they shopping online? Where do they live? How do they, how do they live their lives? What is their philosophy? You may not want to work with everybody that has completely different philosophy from you or you may it it's up to you so figure out what your target audience's philosophy is and whether you can work with that person what are their interests what are their beliefs there are people who prefer to just work with people who are church going people and there are other people who want to work with 
younger people and others want to work with seniors. So figure out what their beliefs are, what their interests are, and where do they live. Also, in the where do they live part of it, look at that digitally as well. So you want to know how they communicate, how they get their news. Not There is not a one size fits all for all of these platforms. For example, if your target customer is moms with kids, particularly younger mothers with kids, you may want to look at Pinterest because Pinterest has a strong community in that demographic. So all these platforms have stronger demographics in certain areas. So look at that. Where do these people live online? How do they get their news? We know that a lot of the younger generation are not getting their news on broadcast news on television. They may be getting it from TikTok. They may be getting it from other sources. So figure out where they get their news from. And once you figure out where they get their news and where they live online, where they communicate, then you know how to position yourself. So be where these people are. So if they're on Pinterest, then figure out how to be better on Pinterest, how to capture their attention on Pinterest. So be where they are regardless of where it is. You don't have to like digital media. You do, you may not like TikTok, but if that's where your audience lives, you better be on TikTok because that may be the only place you get seen. Know your competition because your competition is figuring out where to find this audience. And then once you figure out who your competition is, figure out what your uniqueness is from your competition. That helps you position yourself even stronger. So once you figure all this out, once you find your uniqueness, find out where people live, then you want to bring them all to your yard. Now, people don't relate to a logo. So be human. As hard as that might be for some people who are shy, but being human and showing some vulnerability even helps bring people to your yard. Have a strategy on what to post, when to post it, where to post it. When somebody does come to your yard in the digital space, be human and engage with these people. So when they communicate with you, you need to communicate back. You need to look at people that you want to be associated with, that you want to get close to, and start following them and resharing some of the things that they share and just being a good digi digital citizen. It's like being a good neighbor. So you'll bring a casserole over to a neighbor when somebody dies or when somebody's sick. You do that in the way of sharing information and sharing some digital love in the sense of reshares with your own commentary and why you're sharing it, why you think this piece is great. These are things that will help you improve your PR, get you seen, and ultimately help you grow your business.